Hi everyone! I realized that I haven't finished filming my video about art supplies I use in coloring books. First part was dedicated to my pencils, second part to my watercolor paints, and today I will show you all my remaining art supplies, and I have a lot of them. First of all, here I have my lovely Karandash neon colors. I am very lucky to have the full set. I wouldn't say that the full set is necessary for coloring. I have filmed video about my favorite colors and how you can purchase them individually and which colors I would recommend to purchase. Of course, it uh, depends from your color taste, what you love to color, but at least you can see that many crayons have quite similar shades and even one of them I don't use quite often because of such a brightness in this green and five of them it's definitely too much. The same thing goes to quite similar brown colors, red-brown colors. They are beautiful, the same as reds, but you definitely don't need so many of them if you decide to create your own set and to purchase them individually. I will leave a link to that video for you, but what can I say about my new colors? I love them like crazy. I would say that I use them quite often, not for every work, but quite often, and I would say that they are very economical. Yes, they are pricey, but in the same time, because of the high intensity, of, they are very pigmented, you don't need to apply a lot of them. So probably this one and also pastel yellow. This one are my, my most frequently used and white also and you can see that they are almost the same size as my intact crayons. So I am very pleasantly surprised. In the very beginning I was afraid to use them because of their price and now I am sure that they will serve me for a long time ahead. Why I love to use neocolors? For me, they are much easier to use comparing to watercolors if you are a beginner, because they don't require to work very quickly. When I work with watercolors, I even can't add um, voiceover. I have to add voiceover on my video because I can't comment in the same time when I color. I have to work quickly because everything is floating on the paper. I need to check water constantly. I need to check pigment. But when I work with neo colors, I can work more slowly. First applying them dry, then um, starting to dissolve them. I already made a video about um, my experience, how I had problems in the beginning with creating backgrounds, how I tried to resolve this problem by changing uh, brush, by experimenting with amount of, of water. My favorite way of using them is together with other mediums. Let me show you some examples. Mostly I use them here in Hannah Carson book, but neo colors also are much, they are less demanding to the paper quality. If you are, don't want to risk to ruin your paper, to ruin your book, and if you feel that watercolors will be too much for the paper, probably neo colors are the solution. They require smaller amount of water, so that's why I also love to use them for the backgrounds. Here I used neo colors and a lot of shiny watercolors on top of them. I do love this difference of textures because neo colors, after dissolving, they create matte texture. And if you apply on top of them some shiny medium like a glitter pen or metallic watercolors, everything will look very festive. Another reason why I love to use them is because it's easy to mix colors. 
what I want to say. Look at this background, which have some lilac, mm, lavender and also grey colors. With watercolors I wouldn't risk to mix grey with lilac. I would afraid to create a lot of dirt. And with nail colors mixing is easier. Maybe because um, they don't float as much as watercolors. So even a very contrast colors or colors which with watercolors you definitely would create dirt. I can mix with nail colors. Another good example is here. Again, <laughs> with watercolors I wouldn't risk to use uh, to mix like this um, yellow green with dark brown they would create some dirt and again on top of I used metallic watercolors so everything again is very shiny and I also think that nail colors is one of the quickest way to color your page. Sometimes I also use them like regular crayons without water on top of the colored pencils if I want to add some accents. It's very helpful with pale yellow with white color if you need to add reflection on the glass or some additional uh, highlights on the surface. So sometimes I use them without water. So I highly recommend to have neo colors. If you're afraid to work with watercolors, maybe neo colors will be solution for you. And as I said, I will leave you link about my favorite colors in the whole set. Next, let's talk about my soft pastels. My set of soft pastel probably is one of the first mediums I purchased when I just started to color and of course soft pastel is the way, best way for beginners to start doing backgrounds. First I purchased this set by Mungyo. It has 64 colors as they are small but as I don't use it quite often, especially recently. I do love this set. It has nice variety of colors starting from some natural colors which is very precious like this pastel green, this natural yellow green, some normal blue colors, blue violet colors which are very helpful when you need to create sky or grass or something else. So I do love this set because of the variety of colors. The second set I have here is by the same manufacturer who produce White Knights of watercolors. What can I say? Colors also are not bad and I am maybe even better comparing to Mungyo because they are more natural so to say. But by itself this soft pastel isn't so soft. It's harder and sometimes it's crumble. And you can see that I don't use it often, mostly because I don't use soft pastel recently at all. Only for a couple of my works recently I applied soft pastel. Maybe I need to use it again because it's really good medium and it's just my habit to use neon colors or watercolors. So maybe it will be a good reminder for me. This pastel was cheap and for its price it's definitely not bad. I also have a set of oil pastel, but I never was happy with using oil pastel in coloring books. It's nice if, if you want to, dra to draw something quickly, but in coloring books I totally detest how the surface they create. I don't love to touch it. For me it's unpleasant <laughs> and it's sticky. So this one is for my quick sketches and not for coloring. And finally I have this set of Faber-Castell and this one is probably the softest set I own. Now let me show you colors. It's very highly pigmented 
colors are very intense, so I just have to be very careful when I apply it. It's enough to use just a little bit of it and then I simply rub it into surface of the paper using some cotton pads. I never use any fixative because again I don't love how then how surface looks and I also afraid to ruin part of the picture which is colored with colored pencils. So I simply stick to rubbing my soft pastel into surface of the paper and I love them because they are soft, very highly pigmented and it's really a very nice set. Next, let's talk about my pants. And of course, my favorite pants are by Posca. Now, thanks to Rahel, I have a lot of uh, various types of Posca pants. Probably my favorite set is this one, and the size is um, PC1M, which is my favorite size. With this tips I never have any problems with bleeding through or they always want to work. So this is probably my favorite size. And apart from this pastel set where all colors might be apart from this green are very helpful and I love to use them, especially pastel orange, pastel yellow and pastel pink. Another one uh, very helpful is ivory. Ivory is my total must-have. If I could, I would purchase a huge box of them and I would be crazy happy. Ivory looks more natural comparing to white when you add highlights to hair, skin, fur. So sometimes it's more helpful comparing to white. And it can be used with all colors of pencils, somehow it <laughs> really combines nicely with all of them. I'd like to test also beige, I think that beige also exists, but uh, ivory I definitely can recommend. Apart from this, I have some bigger sizes of Posca, like this one. I can't say that I use them quite often, but sometimes it's also nice to add some dots. I don't use them for creating backgrounds. I'm afraid that they will run out of inks somewhere on half of the page, but maybe I may try one day and I can create background using Posca because I know that they can create background without visible um, lines and strokes. Apart from this, I have this is a very nice variety of smaller liner Posca. A couple of months ago I did video where I swatched them. I have here some metal colors, some pastel colors and even gold and silver. And they are very lovely. And also uh, this more shiny with small amount of glitter pens. They can be very helpful for fairy wings, for mermaids, and also here we have very beautiful green and very beautiful blue colors. So sometimes I also use them even for mm, flowers and leaves, so this set I also can highly recommend. Apart from Posca, I have some gel pens, but that's all I own. I know that many people have huge sets of gel pens and they know how to use them, but I am not sure how to. I can use them for my style of coloring. So what I have is this set of glitter gel pens. Maybe you are already familiar with them because with silver gel pen from this set I do a borders on my Johanna Basford calendar. It's by Uniball Signa and they have this six colors and also there are also silver and golden so it was eight colors in the set. 
Also I have another one silver and white. And it was all about my gel pens. A very, a very moderate stash of them. Next I have things which I use when I need to color fur. And here I have my liners. Mostly I prefer to, pur to purchase colors which can be used for fur. Here I have Stabila. I think that everyone knows these liners, but still I will show you this thin tip. And I always try to purchase a various grays and browns, so I have four of them. Another one brown from Faber-Castell and black by Faber-Castell. And they indeed are very helpful to draw individual hairs on the fur when you all feel that your paper is already burnished and you can't add another layer of pencils. I also have a couple of koi, Sakura koi brush pens. I also purchased some of them for the fur. This warm gray, uh, um, this is probably is sepia and a warm brown and a couple of pastel pink colors. But they are water based, so they are totally not like Posca. Posca are opaque and this they are transparent, so they can't hide black lines. They can add additional color accents. Sometimes I mask black lines using another one of my favorites. It's Molotov acrylic marker. I, I have them only in white color and white. It's not very helpful for edge each and every page. So first I apply acrylic marker, I let it dry and it became permanent and then on top of it I use one of these colors. It can work for skin, it can work for fur and that's why I also decided to purchase this several of Eka lines. I have only five of them, again gray and brown for fur and this one for skin, for leaves Again, just to add some additional color on top of the white acrylic. I tried to purchase mostly pastel colors and inside they have in the same liquid Ecoline watercolors, so probably you can refill them and for me it's another plus. For these markers, comparing to these ones, which you can't refill. So that was my stash of pens and markers, apart from alcohol-based markers, and this will be my next item in my stash. I can't say that I use my alcohol-based markers quite often. Honestly, I think that during last year, this year, I used them only a couple of times for coloring. But it's my goal for the next year to start coloring more with alcohol-based markers. And my first set, set of this Copic Chow, I got more than 10 years ago when I was more interested in scrapbooking and doing some other DIY things. And I hadn't used them a lot, so they are still working, at least most of them, apart from grey colors. And I also have this set of Pro Markers. I purchased set for the light skin tones. And I also have several markers, which I purchased individually, like this. I can't say that I have a lot of markers, so probably I will try to purchase more. I hope maybe Santa will bring me something for this Christmas. So, and it's my plan for the next year, as I said. I do love to use them and recently I got a lot of one-sided books 
where I will be perfectly able to color with markers and it was another reason of why I want to purchase more of them and to start practicing. I really love how markers work as a first layer and then to add details with colored pencils. And I also have another set. It's Winsor & Newton, it's so-called pigment markers. I got this from Jackson's Art, I was curious, I wasn't able to find a lot of information and I decided to purchase it. Again, it was set for coloring scheme and probably it's one of my worst disappointments in art supplies. I still don't know how to use them properly. They are definitely not behave like alcohol-based markers. When I use them, they lay with some ugly stripes, they don't blend well. So, if you are familiar with this series of pigment markers and if you know how to use them in coloring books, I will be happy to hear. First, when I was thinking about alcohol-based markers, I was convinced that I need to purchase only Copics because I really loved their brush tip, which we have on Copic Sketch and Copic Chow, but you know that they are crazy expensive and it was luck that I have purchased this set a long ago and at that time prices were a little bit more reasonable. But now, when I started slowly to purchase Pro Markers, I realized that for me it's also very convenient to work with this type of bullet tip. It's also possible to create nice mixes and to fill in big spaces, so for me now there is no difference which type to use. Well, Pro Markers, they are cheaper and they are not refillable and probably I think that with not so big amount of pictures which I color with alcohol-based markers, maybe I need to invest in something budget-friendly but with bigger amount of colors and to start practice with that set and then I will be able to decide if I need to invest into something more expensive. So for now that's my thought about my alcohol-based markers. The last part of my art supplies are acrylic and gouache paints, but first I want to show you a very helpful thing. It's transparent gesso, which you can use as a base for watercolors in the books where paper isn't very thick and you're afraid to ruin paper. I already used it several times and results were perfect. Any problems with bleeding through, it protected paper in the book perfectly. I hope that in the beginning of January, when I will have more free time, I finally will do video about using clear gesso, how it's possible to use watercolors over it and how it's possible to use pencils over it. So this one I definitely can recommend. My acrylic paints, I have some in sets, like this beautiful set of professional acrylic by Mimery. Here I mostly have like primary colors and the most popular colors like Sienna, uh, Cobalt, Indigo, Ultramarine, Ochre. Some of them are opaque, some of them are semi-transparent. They are very thick, creamy, very highly pigmented, so they are really are very good. When you apply them to the paper, they create almost a matte surface and I do love them. I can't say that I use acrylic paint in my pictures quite often and that's another thing which I intend to correct during next year. It's again one of my goals. But I used it several times. 
Let me show you some examples like I did it here. This one is colored with acrylics and then for some of the details I added pencils. This one also I created with acrylic paints. Why I love acrylic is because they are less demanding to the paper quality. You don't have to add a lot of, of water. You can even work without water. So you can use them even in the books where paper is quite thin and not suitable for watercolors or neon colors. I also used it here for a couple of pictures. For this one for the background and for this one also for some of the details. Apart from this set of basic primary colors, I have this interesting set of 12 shades of grey. I did separate video about this set and I love it because all colors they are muted. Sometimes I have difficulties how to mix colors apart from basic ones, so I love to have some pre-mixed colors for me. And apart from this I also have this box of paints. Many of them are by Ukrainian manufacturer. We are very lucky to have our own Ukrainian company, it's Rosa, and it provides us with quite good paints. It can be in smaller bottles. This one isn't professional, this one is for decor, so to say it's a very cheap. I believe that cost of this is less than half of the United States dollar, but still it's very good for creating simple background when you just need to create matte surface just to cover everything with one color. And I do love it because it has nice variety of colors. This is more professional series of their paints. I already used them in Maria Trolle book where I didn't know how to do background so acrylic also were very helpful. Apart from this I also have some colors by Amsterdam, it's by Royal Talents and I do love these paints, they are very nice. I try to purchase opaque paints, you know that this sign, this full square, it means that this one is fully opaque, so very helpful for backgrounds, but I also have several semi-opaque like this sign means. I have several colors and I definitely can recommend them, they are very good. I have a couple of metal colors, again by Rosa, and my favorites are acrylic gouache paints by Turner. I have some bigger tubes here. It's Japanese paints and they are amazing. They are always opaque, they always produce matte surface, so if you love intense matte backgrounds you definitely need to look into this series. Again, they are not cheap, but quality is very good. I tried to purchase some interesting colors like muted colors from their Japanese series like this grayish purple or grayish red or olive green, some pastel colors and of course I always try to find some nice greens, so I have them also. And I also have a set of these paints in smaller size. 
Acrylic gouache is a mix of acrylic paint, so they became dry, uh, they became permanent after drying, and mix of gouache, so their surface is totally matte, unlike acrylic, which is a little bit glossy. These paints provide totally matte surface like original gouache. So this one I also can recommend. And finally I have my gouache paints. They are in these small jars. It's not the best way of uh, having your gouache paints because they dry quite quickly, but gouache you can activate with water so I'm not bothered. It's by the same manufacturer who creates white nights watercolors, so quality is quite high. I can't say that I use it a lot. Of course, I very often use white gouache, which I also have in a bigger size. This one is titanium white and I do love it. It works nice for masking black lines, for adding highlights. And during the whole winter season it's my must-have for creating snow. But this set is also a very good and prices very reasonable. But I think that I also want to invest into a bigger set of gouache and I will try to use it more. Here I found swatches for my acrylic gouache. You can see how nice they are, how opaque they are when you apply them. They don't create any stains, any stripes. So when you move your brush, the brush movements, they are invisible on the paper. And I do love this kind of surface they can create. It's a very simple, very easy way to do backgrounds. And that was all which I used for my coring. I would say that I have quite big stash of art supplies. Of course, every time I want to purchase something new and I want to experiment. I think that my next video will be dedicated to my small art supplies haul which I recently got from Jackson's Art because there I got some totally new supplies for me. So I hope that you will be joining me to watch that video. Anyway, thanks for watching this three series about my art supplies, my pencils, my watercolor paints and the rest of my stash. Thanks for everyone who sent me gifts, which I love to use. And I hope that the rest, the second part of the December will be more free for me, so I will be able to do more tutorials and Christmas videos for you. Thanks for watching and have a nice time!